Hey everybody, a theory that's doing the rounds about the thing is that you can tell which characters are imitations because their eyes have no reflective gleam. This theory started when one of the crew who worked on the movie stated in a commentary on the Blu-ray release that in this particular shot of Palmer the lighting was arranged to remove any eye gleam. Now I like the fact that in the same shot the missing eye gleam is made more subtle because our conscious attention is drawn to the slight change of expression on Palmer's face. He looks nervous, and it's not a fake expression. Nobody's looking at him, so the thing has no motive to do any acting for the other characters. So I think this is a genuine expression of fear from the thing, and it seems to be the only confirmable instance of it in the whole movie. Unless we take this moment as being not just an act, but a display of frustration that Mac is taking total charge of the situation. This is bullshit, Mac. Finish it, Palmer. They're dead, Mac. The Palmer thing doesn't want to be tied up. Now the eye gleam detail is a great little revelation because eyes are actually used to make the Palmer transformation particularly creepy. When he transforms, the first shots show his face again with no eye gleams and a weird contrast between his blank expression and his whole body shaking violently. It's like the fake exterior of humanity has completely disappeared as the monster erupts from within. In the next shot he bleeds from his eyes and then the eyes inflate and seem to turn pale like golf balls, like they're about to burst. Eyes are possibly the most psychologically important feature of the human face because we both see with them and reveal our emotions with them. You know the old saying, the eyes are the windows to the soul. Well, with the Palmer thing, the eyes are the windows to the lack of a soul. If this creature has just destroyed the functioning eyes of Palmer, then how can it see around the room? Surely it would be best to keep the eyes intact during the fight. So this gives the impression that the monster is continuing to perceive the environment through some other sensory means. The face then becomes skull-like or death-like just before the gravity-defying and utterly inhuman jump onto the ceiling. And when it jumps back down, there's still some mushy skull-like features there, but again, the eyes, they're completely gone, just black holes into a void. That's damn creepy because it suggests the monster to be devoid of all recognisable human emotion. It's like the Windows character is staring into a spiritual abyss that's about to literally devour him. So that initially missing eye gleam that made Palmer look kinda dead inside was like a little foreshadow of the facial transformation that was about to happen. Brilliant. Now as far as I can tell that's all symbolic stuff, a way of creeping us out in that particular scene but I don't think it's intended to be a way of figuring out who's an imitation from one scene to the next throughout the whole movie, or in the end scene. In fact, that theory can be debunked very simply. We know that throughout the entire blood test scene, Palmer isn't human, yet he does have eye gleams here, and here. The Norris thing and crawling head have eye gleams too. So does the Blair imitation, and the dog imitations. No, the theory doesn't hold up at all when you look at the entire movie. At most we could say that maybe the Palmer thing was already subtly beginning to physically change just before his blood dish was tested, but I think that's about it. Still, it's a great little revelation from the filmmakers, and it shows just how marvellously subtle the movie is. I mean, I've never noticed this eye gleam, and I don't think I ever would have noticed it. You've been listening to Rob Ager. I've got some more short videos on the thing coming over the next week or so. If you don't want to miss them, then subscribe and follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I've got more videos on the thing and other classic movies on my two film analysis channels and a ton of downloadable vids and articles at my site, collativelearning.com. All links are in the video description below. Thanks for watching.